Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode review here on Enzu Final Space. This is episode number 5. I am your host, Gabe Jones. Today we get to take an in-depth look at chapter 3 of Final Space. As always, spoiler alert for this episode, and if you haven't checked out chapter 3 yet, you can always find it on TBS or Verve. Let's get into it. So we start off this episode as usual, now with Gary's oxygen down to 7 minutes. There's a comedic exchange about Carl owing Gary 25 bucks. Now, I have a real quick spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the entire season yet, so skip ahead about 30 seconds. So, so something happens here where voices start coming through and asking for help. From what we know from the fight at the end of the season, Earth is gone, and it seems like Gary's rebel fleet is knocked out completely. Still, we hear those voices in distress along with the large explosion. Who are these voices? A prediction? Maybe it's the people who pick up Gary in the last shot of chapter 10? Who knows? So anyway, back to this chapter. Finally, we get a quality scene of Little Kato. I'll be honest, I think Little Kato is probably my favorite of the gang. Uh, Steven Yeun, who's one of my favorite actors anyway, he does this role perfectly. So we get a new mysterious stranger to help our imprisoned cat boy. Also, he believes so much in Avocado and such an adorable relationship, and I'm really, really glad they added it to this show. So, Gary's back to video messages. It's still cute how much he cares for Quinn and really wants to hear from her. Finally, we get a good look at the Lord Commander's main ship, the Heavy Incinerator. As with everything, I love the design of this ship. I'm not going to say much, but poor Mooncake is scarred for life. You can rewatch that scene as they go up the uh, gravity elevator. Um, poor, poor little buddy. Temporal worm, temporal worm, temporal worm. Yes, I am so freaking glad this made it into the show. I loved in the pilot. It was so freaking cool, and I love it now. Plus, I actually think the one from the show is much much cooler than the pilot. Um, the design, the animation. Uh, as it's coming out of the portal, is just, wow. I It's really, really good. Kudos to the art team for that. It's incredible. So, Kevin is like a super perv, along with sucking, in general, with life. Um, they do a cool four jump in time, um, with the funny of Gary's not getting to exempt the rest of the days of his imprisonment. It's hilarious they wrote that into the, the bylaws of... Uh, his imprisonment, but, you know, it's a sci-fi show. Um, so here's my question. Are the shots we see of Quinn later in this episode present to Gary and Avocado, or four days behind, as, you know, they jump four days into the future? That had me a little confused. One thing I would love to know, uh, as they were talking about, you know, Avocado and the Order of the Twelve, uh, is Avocado's past with the Order of the Twelve. We'll discuss the next scene in, in just a moment, but I want to know how his past with the 12, or that he knows about Yarno. Um, also, if he already has this kind of relationship with the Lord Commander, uh, and he knows about the Lord Commander's relationship with the Order, why does it just go to Yarno? And this is something else we're going to discuss in Fantrax Against Respond, but just an initial, initial question. Anyway, so we're back to Lord Commander on Terracom Prime, and we get introduced to probably the coolest creatures and organization in this entire show, uh, which is the Order of the Twelve. One of my favorites. It's it's a really interesting and mysterious thing, and once again, that's another fan track scans respond uh, that we'll look at later. Um, one of the fans came up with some, some cool theories that uh, I'll discuss with y'all later. Um... So a cool little Easter egg in here is that the symbol for the Order of the Twelve is actually an inverted Roman numeral twelve, which I found pretty cool. Um, so the Order seems to be led by High Help Ahula. Um, while the actual goal of the Order is not specifically stated, uh, they seem to be a chain of helpers that flow information between themselves and are worshippers of the Titans. Uh, they're mentioned in this episode, but we'll cover them later when the Titans are explained um, a couple episodes later in the season. They seem to operate as their own entity, but are also advisors to the Lord Commander. So we find out that Lord Commander is dying, uh, killing himself by his powers, which are still kind of yet unexplained. unexplained. Um, 
and the little commander has some pretty cool powers still. Uh, the exploding eyeballs were a really cool effect, and I, I really like that. That was neat. Also, I understand that he's upset, but why threaten to kill your like largest source of information? I don't understand. Um, so one thing that I love is that the art crew makes every setting different. Uh, the planets and aliens each have these individual characteristics and color schemes. Yarno is very, very cool, and I, I love the variation of the, the colors, and it's the backgrounds are really great. Uh, the landing sequence for the Galaxy 1 as well was really, really cool. Once again, Final Space Comedy is hilarious. The guy getting his head rip, ripped off is, like, ridiculously scary and uh, disturbing, but is hilarious nonetheless. Yes, 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 more Quinn action. As always, Quinn is uh, a great a great female protagonist and a great character. Um, once again, I just I just love her arc in general. Uh, the rogue independent officer going after what's right. Um, as in most sci-fi, is, it's just really, really good. So the quantum gravitational disturbance is two parsecs from Jupiter. Cool. So we get our really first really good view of the breach in space. We get Tribor, who is hilarious as always, and uh, I know o Olin's favorite character, uh, for reasons we'll figure out later in the season. Uh, no spoilers for that, um, but Tribor is just a, a funny, a funny character anyway. Um, so here's another problem with light folding, specifically for me. What designates how long travel time is? So Tribor says that uh, Superior Stone, who's in charge of the the Infinity Guard. Dispatches a cruiser after Quinn the day before. How long has she been traveling? The Galaxy One just kind of seems to show up and take off wherever really quickly, not really barring any time. There is some points where they're traveling, but it's just not really that often, and it's for really quick periods of time. So, does the Galaxy One maybe light fold faster than the Hawks or uh, the T3 Imperium cruisers, which we'll talk about in a little bit? Um, do the Hawks just light fold slower? Um, still, the light folding effects are ridiculously cool. I really like the the blue, pink, purple color scheme, um, and then the trail, the kind of light trail coming out from Quinn's Quinn's Hawk is really cool. So, the helper assistant or the helper helper is super creepy, uh, and the fact that Tom Kenny voices him just amuses me as always. His variation in voice is incredible. Um, Stevel, uh, is maybe even more creepy. Um, I also feel like they should have realized the fact that leaving Mooncake with the helper was a bad idea just kind of from the beginning. Um, I also wish the powers of the helpers were a bit more defined. They share information, sure, but they can also change size, suck things into their eyeballs, weird, and not people into mental prisons. I'm, I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. Now the Lazarus Trap scene is brilliant. The scene setting is great. Um, it's actually inspired by a 1953 art piece by uh, M.C. Escher called Relativity. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to look that up, go look it up. Really great piece. Uh, also the laser shooting, trident loading, death cookies. Amazing. Olin Rogers, hilarious as always. Um, one question when we flash back to Mooncake in the cell is, why did he wait to break out of the prison cell at all, um, other than for the exposition of the helper helper uh, as he's walking through the cells? Um, so then we're back to Quinn. We get a really good shot of the Imperium T3 cruiser, and it's not crash form from the episode before. Um, the T3 is another cool ship design. Um, the incinerator and the T3 and all the ships in, in the show are incredibly designed and I, I I really love all of them. Uh we get Quinn being awesome, not I mean, not unusual, really good stuff. Um Chuck with a no I'm not crying, it's space pollen. Golden line, hilarious. Um the fact that the T three can just knock vessels out of light fold is really super cool. Um another Easter egg from this episode is that when Chuck Shuts down her ship. The uh, the waving finger is a reference to Jurassic Park, where uh, Dennis hacks the security grid, and the screen displays something similar to the animation in Final Space. 
So the alien creatures in the Deathcropolis are also super cool and really well designed. Um, one thing I love is Mooncake's reluctance to kill. I think that's kind of an often overlooked arc. Uh, he knows he's weapon-like, so he doesn't want to use his powers, but he has to for self-defense. Um, then we jump back to Lord Commander. I like that he's dying as a plot point, um, but what I don't love is how he just kind of decays uh, in this episode alone, like, really, really quickly. Um... Also, the Lord Commander kills a dude for bringing the wrong size biscuit. What the heck is wrong with this dude? Um, so we're back to more Mooncake killing. Uh, another art point that I really like. His light beams that come out of his face are, are really cool. Um, I think they're they're very well designed. Um, so back in the Lazarus Trap, we have a vision of Quinn that appears for Gary. This scene again shows Gary's utter devotion to Quinn. Um, and also this just whole in his person as is just his dependence on on people um he throws avocado to the side and steps into freaking lava to try to get to her um so you, you know it just it just shows his really need for connection to people and his i guess mental instability in general um we have little kato up here for avocado but since we know avocado's character he's he's stronger and he knows what's real um, so question, if all Gary needed was a punch to wake both of them up, why didn't Avocado try that earlier? Mm. Sure, the, I, I like the, the progression in, in, uh, Gary's character, but at the same time, you always have to wonder. So we're back to Mooncake, and he literally gets so tired of killing that with that little commander ripping the creature part, he was about to let himself be crushed, um, which is Kind of heartbreaking if you if you really think about it and really analyze that scene. Um, Mooncake literally gives up because he's tired of killing, um, which I really think that's another internal conflict that I really like with Mooncake. Um, Lord Commander, uh, along with dying, is also losing his power uh, as we as we see when Mooncake shoots the laser at him as Moon, as the Lord Commander fires rocks at him, I guess. Um, which means he leaves me wondering, uh, how did Mooncake's beam not just straight kill Lord Commander? Um, being that he fired him back. I guess, you know, we know the Lord Commander has powers, so maybe he has some sort of protection, but he was injured some. But still, Mooncake, like, destroyed all the creatures in that pit before then. Um, Lord Commander's line, that being can unlock final space, roll credits. Um... But what is Final Space, as Gary asks? Uh, and that we will not know for quite a little bit, so no spoilers here when it comes to that. Uh, the ships coming in, where it seems like they might lose for a second, is really cool, uh, especially with the shadows. I know a lot of modern cartoons would keep away from that, but I applaud the art, te art team for it. Um, they did a really good job with uh, the effects there. Um, Gary finally re realizing Mooncake is a weapon. It was really cool. Um, it was a really good scene. Uh, Kevin coming down to save them is hilarious. I uh, hate him, but love him. Uh, we get a short clip of Nightfall, better known as Heisha Quinn, uh, as she appears to save the team again. So she she's planted something in Kevin, uh, the last episode where she appeared, and um, we're not quite sure what that is here for yet, but uh, she's told Kevin that he's going to have to save the world one day, so... Um, she seems to be coming back for the team, so she's she's got this mysterious thing, this beef with Mooncake, but she seems to be wanting to save the team nonetheless. Um, so they didn't really arrest Quinn, but they just kind of brought her onto the ship. Um, I want to know if it's kind of like a little time skip and they, when they get really close to the disturbance suddenly. Um, the gravitational disturbance is... Maybe they realize, oh, crap, maybe she's right. Um... So I'm going to do a, another future spoiler, so skip ahead if you haven't watched ahead a bit already. Um, so if Chuck is sent to arrest Quinn, is not the entire Infinity Guard um, informed about the Infinity Guard Lord Commander plot where they join up? Uh, he seems really shocked about the breach. Uh, I don't know, I, I kind of found that weird. Um, so anyway, back to this chapter once again. Quinn survives the breach sucking in uh, in what's kind of a really long drag out to the escape pods. 
Um, I also love the idea of the light folding escape pod. Uh, I haven't really seen a show that puts light speed travel into their escape pods. Uh, that's, I don't, that's a really cool idea. The next shot uh, going into the bridge of the Galaxy 1 is very cool. Poor Avocado still can't find his son. Uh, Gary and Mooncake's relationship is perfect. Uh, they play so well off each other uh, with both their internal conflicts and Gary needing a companion um, who becomes Mooncake and Mooncake needing to reassure himself with unmatched optimism from Gary. I believe Olin has mentioned in the past that he wanted this kind of be of a story of a boy and his dog and I really think the Gary and Mooncake relationship perfectly fits that mold. So we leave this episode with Quinn's distress call and the Lord Commander now more injured, beamed up into a larger ship we have yet to see him, which is super cool and mysterious. So what will become of Quinn? Uh, I guess we'll have to wait till Chapter 4 to find out. Next up is Fantrexian's Respawn. Alright folks, welcome back to Into Final Space. I'm Gabe Jones and welcome to Fantrixians Respond. This week I got some great responses to thoughts on Chapter 3 from fans on the Final Space subreddit. So, let's see what they had to say about this episode. The first question I asked was thoughts about the Order of the Twelve. It seems Gary Space on the Final Space subreddit was intrigued about this group as I was. So, they gave me an interesting list of questions when it came to the order that I'm going to theorize off of. To start off, Gary Space asks this. They're sacrificing alien creatures to the Titans, which implies that they worship them. But, how much do they know about them? Is Final Space more common knowledge than it seems like it is? These are two great questions. What I'm about to theorize is, might spoil some of the future episodes. So, for those who haven't watched ahead some, uh, be warned. Later on, we see that Nightfall has some pretty decent knowledge about the Titans. However, she's the only one who mentions anything about their origin and their nature. Lore Commander seems to have a pretty good idea of what they're about, um, but at the same time, it's never completely explained exactly how much he knows. Still, as I said or earlier, the Order seems to work for the Lore Commander, so it's possible they share information about the Titans. As for the knowledge of Final Space... Once again, I think this is shared knowledge between Lord Commander and the Order. So the next string of questions that Gary Space provided was uh, just questions that dealt with Avocado's knowledge of the Order sacrificing creatures. This slightly confused me as well. Um, if he knew about the gladiator-style killing, why did he think it was a safe place for Mooncake? Gary Space presented the possibility that this is limited to the Yarno chapter, or they trick people into leaving creatures there just to sacrifice them. I feel like the former might be the closest option. Something else presented on Reddit is that Avocado might have thought the sacrifices to be specifically volunteered sacrifices from specific people like, here's my creature, you can kill it for the Titans. Um, rather than, you know, they have a separate place for safeguarded fugitives. I don't know, uh, the... It's really not explained well, um, and the Order of the Twelve is really just a mysterious group. Um, so I really hope we get some more about them next season, uh, kind of what they're about, what they do, really their connection with the Titans, and maybe where they get their powers from. You know, it'd be it'd be really interesting to learn more about them. So, uh, dangerous wish, dangerous underscore wishbone, uh, also from the subreddit, answers some of my other questions about this episode. Um, first I asked how people felt about Quinn, um, and they answered that they love Quinn, and I completely agree. Um, I also agree that, um, there are many out there that have seen her as this mean and thus kind of unlikable character, um, but like Wishbone said, uh, I believe that's just who she has to be to survive. I mean, she's... She's not following the traditional order. Uh, she's going against authority. Uh, she's becoming her own person, um, which I think, once again, that's her, that's her arc, uh, becoming who she is. And, you know, even, tad spoiler, um, just for a second, you know, going against Nightfall in the future, I mean, you know, she's she's trying to figure out who she is in all of this. Um 
I, I that's just who she has to be to survive. Next, I asked about uh, Mooncake's reluctance to kill. Wishbone said that this does show that Mooncake is aware of his power and the concept of mortality. And I absolutely agree, as I said earlier, and uh, I really love this internal conflict that's part of the show. I believe all these characters have these these different internal conflicts, and Mooncake's being a super weapon, but at the same time, something that doesn't want to kill things is is really interesting. Um, so finally, I asked for uh, some favorite parts of this episode. Um, Yarno and the Lazarus Trap were voted some of the coolest things from this episode. Um, Wishbone specifically said that the alien designs on Yarno were really cool, and I agree they were freaking awesome. Um, there was a very interesting mix of uh, of designs and um, you know the background painting and the design um, and the prop designing and the character designing all for that uh, was was really cool and uh, it was very 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 cinematic. Um, also, the Lazarus Trap uh, not only was it really well designed, uh, backgrounds really well painted, um, it really kind of presented some things about Gary. They dove a little deeper into his character, and I don't know, more unsettling than anything, uh, showing us, you know, who he who he really was. Um, this dependency and the constant need for uh, for someone. Um, so yeah, it was it was a really good episode, and um, thank you for all the responses to this week's fan track scenes respond. Um, remember as always to look out for my questions on both. Uh, episode reviews as well as upcoming cast and crew questions on the Final Space subreddit as where as well as the Into Final Space Discord. Well that is all for this, the fifth episode of Into Final Space covering chapter three of Final Space. We've got some more very, very special crew interviews coming up, um, including uh, Final Space art director Devo uh, who's done an incredible job with the show, and uh, I really, really admire his work. Um, so I'm very, very excited to have him on the show. Following uh, some of the producers have agreed to to come on to interview, as well as uh, a few of the artists, background painters, uh, background designers, compositors. Um, I'm I'm really excited to for the interviews that we have coming up uh, within the next few weeks. Um, remember to follow me on. Instagram and Twitter at Into Final Space. Uh, keep up with Reddit. Uh, you can always find me there in the the Final Space subreddit, as well as uh, join the official Into Final Space Discord, uh, where our, we're discussing different episodes as well as talking about the upcoming cast and crew interviews. Um, and so we we have a lot going on there. Um, once again, thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time on Into Final Space.